signs of autism to look out for in your toddler. First, we ask what is autism. Autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder that is characterized by an impairment in the ability to communicate with others, an impairment in the ability to form social relationships, repetitive and stereotypic behavior patterns. According to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder, DSM-5, a manual of the American Psychiatric Association, which provides us a list of diagnostic criteria as well as signs to look out for in autism. This list consists of social interaction, communication and language, restrictive, repetitive and stereotypic behavior patterns. Social interaction, a lack of the ability to follow familiar adults with their gaze or look at what is being pointed at, a lack of enjoyment for activities all the children will enjoy, example, bet the party, play dates, lack of showing or pointing at objects of interest can be described as self-sufficient, that is happiest when left alone, inability to look parent or caregiver in the eye, eye-to-eye -eye gaze or poor expression, isolate themselves in a group setting, communication and language, delayed receptive language, Show, showing a lack of understanding of what is being said. Example, at 18 months, a child should recognize familiar individuals, objects, or places within the home. Delayed expressive language, not vocalizing words or verbalizing by, gest by gestures. Difficulty with pragmatic language. Child's inability to use language as required for different settings. For example, a four-year-old child should be able to follow the rules of conversation, stay in topic, take turns, ask questions. An unusual intonation, repetitive use of language, impaired make-believe play. A regression or an absolute loss of speech the child should be able to wave bye-bye at one year. S repetitive stereotypic um, behavior patterns. An unusual adherence to routine or rituals. Repetitive motor mannerism, example, body rocking and flapping, always seeking to touch others. Fascinated by numbers, letter signs, or any object of choice fixated on objects. If your child ticks off some of these criteria, please do not wait. Early intervention makes a whole world of difference. Remember, no two children exhibit the exact same symptoms of autism, tells the statement by Dr. Stephen Shaw. If you have met one individual with autism, you have met one individual with autism. So, your child has been diagnosed with autism. Now, what next? I always ask that question, what is diagnosis? <laughs> <laughs> you know me, you all know me, you know me. I, you know why I ask that question? I have, I don't stop talking about, my daughter is 21. She has autism, she's on the spectrum, okay? So think about 21 years ago, what diagnosis entailed and I, I, I say it not out of a place of we should throw away everything that's happened, but I come from a perspective of I've seen what happened previously. Like you rightly said, the world has moved on, we're copying things. And so there are a lot of diagnostic tools out there. That, so it's no longer a question of I give you 10 questions to respond to, and when you've ticked off the 10, you now say, oh, you give somebody a label, they have autism, which is what mm -hmm. is still happening. Quite a number of people are doing it. But that is just screening. Absolutely. So if you've done the screening and you suspect that this individual may have autism, mark my words, may have autism. autism. 
what should you do? Refer them to someone that can diagnose properly. Not just looking at the DSM-5 like mm. you pointed out, because that is just a, a criteria. criteria. Yes. Mm -hmm. If we don't have people who are trained yes. to use a tool to diagnose, that's a different. But I know there are a couple of us around who are doing that. Okay, so it's important to have that. You can have a clinical diagnosis, no problem. But at the end of the day, let's not give people the label and say they have autism mm. without confirming. Yeah. I am doing a research work right now. Okay, we went out of Lagos State and we met this child, a girl who's about 11, 12, thereabouts, you know, adolescent. And when I ran the diagnosis on her, she didn't meet the criteria for autism, ASD. But I kept asking myself what was going on until we got hold of the mother who then answered the screening questions. And I compared it to what was in the DSM-5. It turned out that this child had childhood disintegrative disorder which is also a neurodevelopmental Mental disorder. disorder. Maybe that's something people don't really understand, it is that a doctor telling you is different from the specialist telling, telling you, right? right? So like when you go for your MOT and maybe, you know, the GP has found something, you know, found a lump, I suspect it might be, you know, cancer, or found something I suspect is this. You then are referred to the specialist, specialist. in that area to check. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, it's a similar thing. Get the lump that, out, do a biopsy, and find that. I think for me, I think for me, the next question should be, who then does the diagnosis mm -hmm. before? Because I think there. that a lot of it, just like I've, as you said, some people have the screening tool, and then you use the screening tool to screen out, and you say this. So who does the diagnosis? Because sometimes I just go to one person, or even you know the doctors cannot just be the person to do a diagnosis. They, they do not do that. No, they, 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 they shouldn't. Like, they, they shouldn't. They, they but shouldn't. sometimes, they do. that is what you get. They shouldn't, so yes. Someone walks in to you and says, <laughs> they, they, they use, what, what they use is a scale, that, like the that, DSM, the criteria. That's what, what we're saying. So is that's what, what it's saying. not a so diagnosis. I like we need to speak on that because let yes. people be knowledgeable about who does the diagnosis. Because you said you need a diagnosis you for you to be able to get intervention so who does the diagnosis so that's what okay. we're what i say remember what i said i'm not saying we should jettison mm. the yeah. dsm criteria because to be trained to do a diagnosis costs a lot of, a lot money. of money it is not readily available in the country mm -hmm. i remember one of the hospitals i worked with in the course of my research when they found out i was ados trained and all of that they wanted me to train them but i said i had to go back to where i did the training to be sure that i had the approval to train the trainer yes so that's what so it's expensive and i understand that what i'm saying or the emphasis is we're not saying don't tell people that don't do the assessments and everything that you're doing but to have a differential, a definitive differential diagnosis requires a bit more than administering mm -hmm. 10 questions, 40 Not questions, scale. some Not checklists, a scale. Not a scale. Which Not is what a lot of us oh. have. Okay. If you use the DSM-5 criteria, I know That's some of us wouldn't like to hear it, but I always say it. And for me, that is the gospel truth. We say we've been copying people. Let's copy them then to the, the end. right way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if right you use thing. a checklist, you use a skill, you use anything other than an autism diagnostic tool, let's be honest enough to just say it there. Mm -hmm. That my clinical impression is so, so, and so. So people, because we get that a lot in the center, people come to say, oh, they've given us a diagnosis. Not everybody will afford a diagnosis. My daughter wasn't diagnosed until three years ago because she needed that report to get this for her to access the sort of support that she required in the next stage okay so 
That's why it's really important. If you have a suspicion, state it there, I suspect this. It's yes. fine. Mm -hmm. it's what Aside about, whatever the fact you've that done, find, yes. it's the diagnostic <laughs> tools are expensive. Very. And you need to be trained. I remember as a, two years ago, I couldn't get any tool with my level of certification. I couldn't. But last year, I could get certain because you need to be trained and even at that i'm even still requesting for more training because you get a lot of reports that says otherwise but the most important thing aside the um suspicion mm -hmm. a diagnostic re report i see it as opening the doorway mm. to the right intervention for your Absolutely. child. Mm -hmm. I like that. So opening it opened the doorway for the right, for the right intervention. For intervention. For Why do I say so? I will bring this home to myself. I suspected a lot of things for my son. Nobody was, I don't know what was going on in Nigeria then. I really <laughs> do not know. They were just, oh, your child is fine. Oh, it's fine. But I knew there was something. I started doing what I could do. Thankfully, yes, it's made a lot of progress. But as soon as he got a proper assessment and a proper report, I could then put in the right intervention that for the very first time, even at school, they are saying, oh, it's a lot calmer. Oh, this is going on. So that is what that a diagnostic report would help you do. We thank you for your attention while the program lasted. We hoped our conversations resonated with you and that in some small way, encourage you to contribute to your immediate environment. Little drops of water, they say, make a mighty ocean. Remember that there's nothing more weakening about a disability than the way people treat you over it. The advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa. Hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Join us next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. See you next time. See you.